Greetings and salutations, friends, and mostly enemies. So, the time is upon us. Dresden Files Battlegrounds Review. Oh, man. You know, here's the thing about the Dresden Files. It's so popular, so many people talk about it. And there's not much you can say about it that hasn't really been said before, if you know what I mean. Like, man, people talk a lot about this book. But I feel that there are some things that I want to talk about regardless. So, spoiler alert, there's going to be a little bit of a narrative discussion alongside a general review. And, yeah, let's hit it. So first, oh my god, Jim, why do you love torturing Dresden so much? Murphy? Really? You just had you just couldn't you just couldn't help yourself, could you, Jim? You just you just had you just had to kill Murphy. Like and, and of all the ways to kill her, a bullet to the neck from the dick from internal investigations. Jim, you insult us, and you insult your own character. Shame. And then there's just the the bonkers nature of what happened in contrast to how the book wrapped up you know we have this world changing event that there's no way the world would go back to the way it was before and yet that's almost what the end of the book made it sound like was going to happen the accorded nations council uh, at the end that was formed by all the the people on the spooky side of the street really made it sound like the human population in general minus maybe Chicago was going to remain blissfully unaware and it's like I'm sorry I get that there couldn't have been much if any photographic evidence but the idea that there was zero and the idea that you can gaslight and keep several million people shut up about something as traumatic as the monsters invading your city. I'm not buying it. You know, it's it's just too many people. I'm just really not buying it. You know what I mean? And especially, it especially wouldn't fly that way for long because after that kind of exposure... There's way too many monsters who would just be like, well, the humans already know we're, we're a thing, and they'd just be out and about after that. They'd be much more brazen about their activities. Ghouls would just start breaking into people's houses willy-nilly. Oh, five now thresholds. But, like, into businesses and eating people willy-nilly, you know what I mean? It, and, and everyone on the spooky side of the street would have a certain portion of their population suddenly cease to give an F? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, uh, if Butcher really tries to pass off on us that uh, Chicago is the only place that really has a change in human culture and behavior around the supernatural after this whole event, I'm gonna call bullshit. <laughs> Besides that, as a Dresden book goes, the book was great. I mean, it was way more action-packed than a standard Dresden book. The book is about 400 pages, which is pretty standard length for a Dresden book. But as opposed to a normal Dresden book, about 350 pages of that is pure action. And it's beautifully written. Jim really did a great job on this book. And, you know, it, it's just, it's gut-wrenching and beautiful and tear-jerking. There's a section where Butters is fighting the Titan. And, yeah, I I cried. Because his depiction of faith, and not only of faith, but his depiction of what the human spirit is capable of when it really pushes for something, when it really believes in something, it was beautiful. It was poetic, and it was wonderful. In terms of just everything else that happened, you know, we had characters die off, some of whom... I don't care about 
I don't really care that Hendrix is gone. I absolutely care that Karen is gone. Although, to be fair, I never necessarily wanted to see Harry end up with Karen. That's not really who I was gunning for, to tell you the truth. Call me weird, I kind of wanted Dresden and Molly to end up together. Yeah, I know there's like a creepy age difference there, but I don't know. There's just something poetic and beautiful about it in my mind. Call me a little weird or old-fashioned or whatever you want to call me. That's just how it worked out in my head. And then we have to talk about some of the insane magic Dresden pulled off. We saw Dresden create a construct that stopped giants. And yeah, I know he kind of hedged that occurrence with the whole the city is flooded with magical energy thing, but if Dresden can do that under the right circumstances... I'm really curious to see what he could do trying to create his own circumstances. You know what I mean? Because it's been made really clear throughout the entire Dresden series that a wizard with enough prep time can do just about anything. Dresden has been pretty clear about that. And so now that he's done something like that, and that's not really comparable in my mind to anything we've seen him do before, that wall of ice feet was insane i'd really really like to see uh if that changes dresden's perspective on his own capabilities and if any of his other accomplishments in this book change his perspective on his own abilities i mean the guy bound a titan a uh, slightly beaten up tired titan but a titan nonetheless and then there's also the change in power dynamic where Dresden now has a titan bound to his will, which basically makes him the most dangerous man on Earth. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> and all in all, the book just left us with a couple answers and a dozen more questions, as Butcher loves to do. Um, some people were asking if this was going to be the last book. Uh, online. I saw that question come up fairly commonly, and it certainly looks like it is not. Um, I would certainly wager that it's coming, like the end is in sight. Uh, there were references to the end of the world several times in this book, and the, the way the narrative was written out, it was really clear to me that we have the end being foreshadowed, and it's we're building up to the end so in some ways i think you could say peace talks was the beginning of the end of the series considering this is a direct sequel to peace talks so four and a half out of five nine out of ten whatever you want to say i just can't give butcher a perfect score because he loves torturing dresden and sometimes our hero deserves a break you know what i'm saying like Jesus. <laughs> and I also can't give him a perfect score because I did read some things where I was just kind of like BS. You know what I mean? Like like the Rudolph thing. It, I get that uh, we're in a, in a fantastical setting and, and people are, are sketchy and people are unreliable in a, in a hazard and all this stuff. But... The idea that Rudolph is going to see someone shoot a giant with a bazooka and then say you just killed that guy. Like, no, you idiot. That was clearly not a human. You know that. You are you might be frenzied and panicked, but you're not going to accuse someone of murder for shooting an obvious monster. You would have to be completely out of your mind. And maybe that's what Butcher was going for. It's possible that Rudolph just went insane. And on that same scenario, on that same circumstance, uh, frankly, I really, I wanted to see Dresden kill that bastard. I really wanted to see Dresden kill that bastard. And we all know he deserved it. The guy's a scumbag. The guy's a subhuman at best. <laughs> and the fact that uh, the knights magically showed up to stop him yet again from doing the bad thing give me a break you know old school justice might be harsh and it might not be everyone's ideal of justice 
but it is justice. The guy was a murderer, the guy was a scumbag human, and he deserved to have his guts shoved out of his orifices by that shield. And you cannot convince me otherwise. It, it just really bugs me that that Dresden constantly has this ideal of justice imposed upon him that, in my opinion, I don't even think Dresden, the character, fully believes in that ideal of justice. Clearly, he doesn't when he gets mad. And we're not truly capable of things when we're mad that we're not at least somewhat capable of under less infuriated circumstances. It has to be in here somewhere for you to manifest it when you're angry, because that's how the mind works. You don't just get insanely angry and something pops up out of nowhere. It has to, the, the seed for it has to be there. And it's just incredibly frustrating to constantly see scumbags like Rudolph avoid avoid their due punishment it's incredibly frustrating so yeah I'm salty about it all over all said like I said it's a great read I love it it's yet another great entry in the series definitely in the top 10 for the series in my opinion and I really really hope Butcher doesn't keep us on the string for another God knows how many years waiting for the next installment because I'm still waiting on answers for so many things. Who messed with Little Chicago in Dresden's basement? You know, who did this? Who did that? And we don't have answers yet, and it's so frustrating. I think that he's insinuated that uh, Leah, uh, Dresden's fairy godmother, I think he may have insinuated that she's the one who fixed Little Chicago, but I'd still like a more direct answer than an insinuation, because it's like, that place is supposed to be warded against intrusions by fairy creatures, you know what I mean? And by that same token, the short story at the end of this book, where Mab just casually strolls into Michael's house, I'm pretty sure the dozen or so angels who are on guard duty wouldn't just let Mab casually stroll into Michael's house under any circumstances. <laughs> so I found that one I was like, you kind of stretch. <laughs> but it's not my universe. If he says it's canon, it's canon, you know what I mean? So, alright guys, this weekend we have a first for the channel, and it's a first that's going to keep on going at least till the end of the year. We have an interview with, drumroll, Nikki Nelson Hicks. She sent me a copy of Jake Ishtin Hedgy, uh, Accidental Detective Omnibus, and me and her are going to be discussing that, and it's going to be very interesting. I definitely have some uh, some pointed questions to ask her, and I'm, I'm curious to see what she has to say about them and about her work in general. Uh, it is a good read. I'm enjoying it so far tell you the truth it kind of reads like Dresden in some ways <laughs> so stay tuned for that coming this weekend see you guys next time